Now you guys know how much I hate to talk about politics, but you know what? There's just no getting around it. We're going to talk politics, so I'm going to take off the tie and we're going to talk politics, all right? Welcome to another video. Moving around the city, looking for young talent. Children come running, they say they want to see me. I say, come on, my children. Now, before I start talking about the differences in living, etc., let's just first quickly address the biggest thing here, which is that China is full of Chinese people. South Africa is full of many different kinds of people, not just one type, one demographic. You know, China is a very homogenous sort of a society, and every, everywhere you go in China, you will find the majority Hun people, and they all have the same sort of mindset and the same sort of outlook on life and uh, the same sort of culture. You do get something like 56 different ethnic minorities here in China, but to be honest, other than sort of maybe eating slightly different food, having a different, uh, different dialect, and um, perhaps dressing in some kind of different kind of clothes, they have more or less the same sort of lifestyle because the whole of China is basically based off an agricultural sort of uh, society. So even the, the minorities that you find in the mountains somewhere will be following more or less the same sort of uh, lifestyle and ideology as you know the person you'll find living in uh, you know the majority areas now south africa has a very different kind of a history it was just wild african bush and then the europeans arrived i believe it was the dutch um, the founder of south africa as we taught in school is uh, jan van riebeck from the dutch east india company in in the 1600s, I think 1652 or so, so the Europeans came down to South Africa and uh, settled it and you know, basically made it into a colony. And by doing so, built the infrastructure, the cities, the trade routes, all that kind of thing. So South Africa, for all intents and purposes, is a Western country. You do have all these different cultures, you know, this big underlying African majority, and you have all the European style cities and supermarkets and all that kind of thing. Now you guys know how much I hate to talk about politics, but you know what? There's just no getting around it. We're going to talk politics. So I'm going to take off the tie and we're going to talk politics. All right. Now I'm going to try and be as, uh, how can we say, as objective as possible for this because it's difficult. South Africa has a very, very sort of checkered history. And as such, there are a lot of, how can we say, very, well, people with very strong emotions and opinions about the whole subject of the politics of South Africa. So let me give you the abridged history. European settlers came there, like I said, in the 1600s, uh, started to, you know, build and do what they do, you know, like all colonies back in the day. Had a lot of conflicts with the locals at first, tried to just try to deal with them bunch of wars broke out you had the Zulus attacking and all that kind of nonsense you had the local people and the, the settlers fighting and uh, disagreeing uh, long story short hundreds of years later we have a situation where the locals are still there you know the this time around the settlers didn't wipe them all out like they did in some other countries so they decided you know what we don't get along we're going to do this thing called apartheid which is uh, segregation black people you go here, white people, you go here. Um, colored people, you kind of do your own thing over here. If you're Indian, you can be classified as either sort of white or black. So there was this big divide between the white minority settlers and the majority sort of African black population. Now, of course, this led to people being very unhappy as it would, and uh, there was this big uprising and Basically, you had the ANC with their Mkonto Isizwe, which is their um, militant arm, basically going around blowing stuff up, being terrorists and doing what terrorists do, which is cause terror, you know, bombing shopping malls and train stations and things like that, stoning people and setting people on fire and just being, you know, horrible terrorists as horrible terrorists are, you know. And, you know, I was 
I was alive during that period. It was during the sort of 70s and 80s. Of course, I was born in 1980. So I did get to experience a little bit of the fear that was going on during the time in the 80s anyway. But by the time I hit um, primary school, that stuff was all gone. You know, they had already started to abolish apartheid. Of course, the ANC took over in 1994. But before that, uh, things had already been, you know, it was already being prepared for that. So, you know, in primary school, we already had integrated schools. You know, so before where it was segregated, where you, you had whites only schools and blacks only schools. So I went to school in high school with lots of black people of different ethnicities and, you know, it was my generation that was the first generation to really grow up together and not be in this segregated situation. So now when the ANC, the black government, took over in 1994, things started to go downhill. Okay, in the beginning everyone was very optimistic, you know, of course there was a lot of fear on the, the white people's side thinking that, oh no, you know, they're going to take over and they're going to kill us all, they're going to destroy the country and all that kind of thing. Um, but there was a lot of hope as well that, you know, now we had a fair sort of integrated system, everybody would get along and everybody would uh, build a better rainbow nation as it was called. And uh, you often hear it being called the new South Africa, things like that. And in the beginning, it looked like things might be all right, but basically, in all honesty, the country just started to decline. And I mean, from an eco economical point of view, it started to go down. From an infrastructure point of view, it started to go down. You know, things started to go wrong. Power stations started to burn down. Traffic lights stopped working. Potholes started to appear in the roads. You know, and basically, the whole country started to degrade. And that's when blame started to be thrown around by everybody. So basically you have the white people blaming the black people for not being able to run the country. Then you've got the black people blaming the white people for past oppression. And everyone's just hating on each other. But what people didn't seem to realize is that the root, the, the, the root cause of all of this was actually the fact that now the government was being run by a bunch of terrorists who only have their self-interest in mind, only want to line their own pockets. So. In between all of this nonsense, you also have a lot of very vicious and uh, opportunistic criminals which are taking advantage of this new system. Because now everybody's kind of at each other's throats, Every, everything's kind of uh, an uneasy kind of balance, constantly up and down. But in between all of that, if you're a criminal, you can really have fun because you can go and just pillage, um, you know, the white people's houses and blame it on apartheid or the, the past uh, oppressions. And you can also go and pillage and rape and murder and kill in the townships and just, uh, you know, get away with it. It's, it's ridiculous. So what the situation in South Africa is, is these days, it's not really a white and a black against each other thing. It's white and black decent people trying to eke out a living. And they're beset on all sides by, first of all, vicious criminals, okay, who take advantage of everyone. And, of course, a self-serving terrorist government who just want to line their own pockets. So that's the real situation in South Africa. Okay, so you got the politics out of me. Now, let's talk about the ramifications of those politics. Let's talk about safety because this is really, like I said, the biggest issue and the biggest difference between China and South Africa. Now, basically anyone who comes from South Africa or ha who has been there before won't be shocked but a lot of first-time visitors are quite shocked to see that you have armed guards with shotguns walking around in the parking lots of shopping malls people live in gated communities with electric fences razor wire boom gates and armed guards at the front gate and private security companies are very popular and everybody has them for instance my parents have a private security company and every time they arrive at the gate of their house they phone there's an armed guard constantly pat patrolling their house their property and the armed guard will come and wait for them at the front gate because it's very common for hijackings when people come home if they park their car and they trying to open the gate and, you know that's when they get hit by the hijackers people you know armed hijackers so this is common and for anyone outside of South Africa, they'll probably think, wow, this is ridiculous. It's like a, a war zone or something, but quite literally it is. Crime in South Africa is one of the highest, probably some of the highest in the world. For instance, there's something like 53 murders a day. The rape statistics are off the roof. I think it may be the rape capital of the world almost, you know, at least uh, 
you can go to Wikipedia. In fact, I'll just link the article and you can look for yourself. But rape is just disgustingly unacceptable there. You have things like the highest level of HIV AIDS infections in the world happen in South Africa. So it's not a very safe place. Now, of course, you do get very nice touristy and kind of friendly safe areas in South Africa. They do exist. In fact, all of the B-roll that you're seeing of South Africa in this video comes from Cape Town. Cape Town happens to be where I was born and it is what everyone in South Africa likes to call the last deck of the Titanic. In other words, the Titanic sinking and it's the last safe place before it all goes under. It is, well, it relies heavily on tourism and as a result, there's a lot more police presence there. You know, things are safer. The, the infrastructure is kept in a better sort of shape. And so it's still a very pleasant place. So Cape Town, if you're going to go visit uh, South Africa, I suggest you go to Cape Town. I personally would avoid Johannesburg, Pretoria, Natal, places like that. Uh, Durban is okay. Huge Indian population in Durban. It's a little different and uh, nice beaches and stuff. You know, good for surfing and all that. But, uh, you know, South Africa, what I'm trying to say is a very dangerous place here. Never go out on your, by yourself at night, especially if you're a single woman. Um, you know, stay away from certain areas, find out from locals which areas are safe, which areas are not safe, and be careful, you know. South Africa, a lot of people carry guns, myself included, I used to carry a gun, and uh, more illegal people carry guns than legal gun, gun holders like myself, so just be very careful, it is very dangerous. And that is the biggest difference between South Africa and China, because in China it's very, very safe. You, as a single woman, can walk around in the big cities at night, midnight, 1 a.m., and nobody's going to hassle you. No one's going to touch you. It's very, very rare. I mean, of course, don't be stupid and walk down some strange dark alley where there's a bunch of drunken mafia guys playing dice on the side of the road. You know, that's just common sense. But in general, it's incredibly safe, and that's why I never need to worry. I used to worry so much when I first got to, got to China. But now, like I say, my wife, I don't mind if it's... 10 o'clock and she wants to go down to the shop to buy something or she's working late and she's going to come back home late I don't need to worry about her safety because I know she'll be okay and so when it comes to safety China is definitely a huge huge step ahead of South Africa now that being said of course there there are violent crimes in China it's it does happen I have mentioned before that you get these mass stabbings that happen every once in a while but that's more of a mental health issue and uh, for those of you who don't believe me that these mass stabbings happen because a lot of Chinese people are like, ah, oh, you're talking nonsense. I'll put some links down below so you can go and see for yourself. But basically, um, China's not very well equipped to deal with mental health issues. Uh, I know my wife's a doctor and she has to phone up mental patients, families, just to kind of check on them because it's the family's uh, responsibility actually to, to control the, the person with the, with the mental issues. And yes, it's a little disturbing as far as that's concerned, but it's not... A widespread thing you know and that's what I'm trying to get at here for for the time I've spent in China anyway I have not experienced any major crimes I was in that pretty bad fight that one time but that was due to my poor cho choice of words you can watch my legal troubles video to find out about that situation and uh, yes I've had various attempts at pickpocketing actually I have stopped three people trying to steal stuff out of my pockets and I've also stopped two other people trying to steal from other people. So pickpockets, they're rampant, you know, there are a lot of thieves here. And of course you get all the scamming. I got tons of scams videos, go check them out. Um, Chinese people like to scam foreigners and scam other Chinese people. It's just part of the culture here. So scamming is a big one. Theft is another big one, but violent crime, you know, other than the occasional sort of mass stabbing or something, it's not actually that much. So China, much safer. Right guys, let's move on to something a little more cheerful, shall we? Uh, let's talk about food. And that's because everybody loves food and South African food is pretty good. Uh, basically, I'll cut to the chase. South African food is very much like European food. You can go to uh, London, Australia, any, any place like that, and you'll find the same kind of foods. And that's because of its European heritage. I mean, we've got steak houses and we have, you know, what, good, pizzerias and fish and chips and well anything you can think of we have there's nothing missing so if you go to South Africa and you're from America 
for instance, or the UK or something, you're not going to miss anything because there is everything there, everything from a Western sort of society. So we love cheese, bread, you know, that kind of thing. And the supermarkets are very international. And, uh, you know, we have all the, lots of big brands. Of course, due to a lot of sanctions during the apartheid years, uh, South Africa has developed a lot of its own homegrown brands. So you have like Spurs Steakhouse and you have, um, you know, our own chains and brands of ketchup and things like that. But for all intents and purposes, South African food is European food. However, there are a couple of distinctions. Number one, we have something there called Buravos, which is, which translates to farmer sausage. <laughs> and uh, it's basically by the Dutch descendants, which we call Dutchmen, um, who are the Afrikaans speaking folk. Uh, they make this wonderful sausage, which is absolutely delicious. You really, really can't go wrong. Um, and of course we have Biltong, which you guys have probably seen in my quitting my job video, which is kind of like a, a beef jerky, which is very famous from South Africa. And uh, let's not forget this big braai culture, or I should say braai, because that's uh, Afrikaans, which basically is a barbecue culture. We love having outdoor barbecues. It's huge. So very similar to Australia, I guess, with the barbecues. And uh, I know Americans like to do cookouts and stuff, but it's Americans usually do a lot more high tech, you know, they got really high tech systems and they're making hamburgers and hot dogs and stuff. We just like to braai huge pieces of meat, like massive chunks of meat, so steaks and sausages and chicken and all this kind of thing. And it's a very South African thing. Whenever you go to South Africa, that's what you do. On the weekends, you know, you go drink beer, watch sports. I personally can't stand sports, but South Africa is one of those very sports orientated countries, you know, uh, rugby and uh, cricket, that kind of thing. So you watch sports, you drink beer, and you have a braai or barbecue. So that's a huge, huge part. Of course, there are some African foods as well, uh, which are quite popular. Things like uh, millipup, it's called, which is kind of like a maize meal starchy thing that looks like mashed potatoes, but tastes nothing like. Not a big favorite of mine, to be honest. But you know, there's all that kind of thing. Um, so food is, is awesome. Uh, China, as we all know, is filled it's such a huge country it's filled with so many different choices when it comes to food every different province has its own specialities and in fact take a look i'm gonna throw in a little teaser from my documentary so you can see some of the weird stuff you can find here in china it's an entire hornet that's huge <laughs> you really don't want to eat this <laughs> It bursts like a pustule, <laughs> like you're popping a zit in the mirror. I do suggest you guys go and check out that documentary, by the way. I know this is a blatant plug, but I'm not joking when I say that things in that documentary are pretty unique. It's probably one of the most unique travel documentaries ever shot in China. And I can pretty much guarantee that you will not see the kind of things in that documentary outside of China. And I don't think anyone ever has seen some of the things that we did ever before, you know, outside of China that is. Anyway, um, there is one thing I have to say about the food though, um, in comparison between South Africa and China, and that is food in South Africa, you can pretty much be guaranteed that it's going to be safe. The reason is, you know, South Africa is uh, still, still has that very European sort of British law system. There's a lot of bureaucracy. And although the crime rates through the roof the part of the law that really works is all the sort of health standards, traffic fines, you know, sort of, oh, you, you haven't paid your, your, I don't know, zoning rights. You know, anything that's got anything to do with the government making some money obviously works very well. However, if someone gets raped, murdered, whatever the case, um, the police just won't bother really. So, you know, you've got a situation where violent and serious crimes aren't taken seriously, but little things, things like health certificates are taken incredibly seriously. So the plus side of that is that every restaurant that you visit to, you can pretty much be guaranteed that the food's going to be up to spec. All the stuff sold in the supermarkets are also up to spec. So you're never going to run into a situation like in China, where you don't know if the food you're eating is poison, expired, fake, 
or anything like that. You'll never run into that situation in South Africa. So I'm going to give South Africa the thumbs up when it comes to food. Not only because it uh, pertains to my taste more, but uh, because it's clean and healthy all the time, 100% of the time. Whereas in China, although you have amazing food, you can never ever guarantee the safety of it, ever. Right guys, that brings me to the end of this video. Now there are a lot of other things I'd like to talk about when it comes to South Africa. I cover China in all my other videos, so if there's anything in particular you'd like to know about China, please feel, th feel free to browse through the many hundreds of videos that I have. I must say that I have a, had a lot of very bad personal experiences in South Africa. I just wanted to finish it off with this, sorry, on a negative note, but when I say the crime is bad in South Africa, I mean it's bad in South Africa. It's, it's affected every single one of my friends and family members. I have had friends that have been murdered in South Africa, and basically it's it's a difficult uh, thing for me to talk about because I have a very sort of, um, I don't know, pent up resentment towards the country just because I've lost friends and because of the, the terrible things that have happened to my family, etc. But, you know, it's difficult not to love a country as beautiful as South Africa. So, you know, I suppose I can leave it on a bit of a balance note and make an analogy for you here. And this is an analogy I tell all my friends here uh, in China that I meet, all, all the Chinese and expats as well. And basically, I would say that South Africa is like the most beautiful woman you've ever met. However, she has AIDS. So, <laughs> although she's beautiful to look at, you don't really want to be messing around with her. <laughs> and on that note, guys, it's time for me to leave. And as always, stay awesome. Hey guys, one big shout out to my friend Nathan Kricher, who's also a fellow South African. He shot all of this footage. I asked him when he went back on his uh, family holiday to, to shoot all this footage. So huge shout out to him. He does have a small little YouTube channel about living in Taiwan. So there's a link in the description. Please check it out if you feel the need. And uh, that's it. Thanks, Nathan.